Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, trust you all are doing well uh, and safe as well. Let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, success, uh, is it okay if you can lead us in prayer this morning? All right, good morning. Thank Shall you. we pray? My Father, my God, I want to say thank you for the life you have given to us this morning. Thank you for every one of us here. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our lecturer. Thank you because we are here and held it. Be thou glorified in the name of Jesus. The Almighty God, I commit this lecture into evil hands, O Lord. Please come and glorify yourself in this lecture. And we will be the hearer and the doers of your word. And you give wisdom to our lecturer to teach us more deeper your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. 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 Thank you. Success. Okay. Uh, before we go in, let's just do a quick review uh, of what we did last week. Last week, we looked at uh, the twofold role that Jesus has on behalf of the Father, right? So we learned that, you know, Jesus is not that it's, you know, he's completed his work on the cross, resurrected, and now... Uh, you know, he's just finished the work and he's not doing anything. No, the Lord Jesus has a twofold role. And we looked at that. The first role was uh, he stands as our high priest uh, before the Father in heaven, right? And the second role was he's, uh, he's our mediator who stands before the Father and enforces the blessings of the new covenant upon uh, us as his children. Now, we also looked at the role of a high priest in the Old Testament. Right? Uh, we saw that you know the high priest had many roles. Right, he had to go uh, stand on behalf of the people. He had to stand on behalf of the nation. He had to stand. Uh, he was representing uh, man to God. Uh, he would go into the holy of holies. He would wear the you know the twelve uh, tribes over his shoulder, over his chest, to say that they are close to him. Uh, and he had Levites under him who helped him. Uh, and he would go into he would he he was in charge of all the offerings and everything that had to be done with regards to the temple. And so we looked at that uh, the role of the high priest in the Old Testament and how the Lord Jesus completed the work of a high priest in the New Testament. Right. So remember the Old Testament, the high priest would take the blood, go into the Holy of God. Here, Jesus, he completed it. Old Testament, the high priest would speak blessings to those people. Here in the New Covenant, uh, Jesus did it. So every role in the Old Covenant as a high priest, Jesus has fulfilled. Right? And now he's doing more than that. Right? Uh, as a high priest, he is... You know, we saw that in the old covenant, when the high, when a high priest dies, a new high priest is taken, uh, takes his place, and so that cycle keeps going. But now, Jesus as our high priest is our eternal high priest, right? He holds fast confession. He is merciful. He is faithful. Uh, Jesus continues to be unchangeable. Uh, he he. There's propitiation of sin. He's our perfect high priest, and as a high priest, he speaks the Father's will uh, to us through the Holy Spirit. Now, over the course of this, uh, you know, these this this entire subject that we've been looking at, we looked at the main points that we can think about is that God and man, God is a holy God. Man, by nature, is sinful. And so that is why this whole thing of high priests and you know God brought all of that into being. But now, through the cross, God, the Lord Jesus, is fully man, fully God. We, we see that in the book of Timothy, Paul writes and he says, we have one mediator between God, the man, Jesus Christ. Right. So which means he, he relates to us. Right now, we can't say that the in the old covenant the high priest could relate to us, but yes, being a human being, he could understand 
you know, okay, these are the problems you are facing. And he would pray for them, pray for the people of Israel. Or he would pray for blessings over their uh, work or over their business, whatever they were doing. Uh, but now we have this high priest who who is a great intercessor and advocate before the Father, right? So this week, we look at something additional that the Lord Jesus is doing, right? We saw the twofold purpose. One is he's our high priest. Two, he's our mediator and our advocate. Jesus is our advocate. So uh, I'm on the notes on page 43, if you're tracking along. Um, and we'll just go ahead and, you know, understand what it means to be an advocate, right? I'm sure you, we all have heard that word uh, advocate uh, in the natural terms. You, you, you know, the first thing that comes to your mind is a court of law when you say advocate. Uh, so let's see what Jesus is doing for us today in heaven as our advocate, right? 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Yes, could one of us please read that? 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. My little children, these things I write to you, so that you may not sin. And even worse sins, we have an advocate with his Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he himself is the provocation for our sins, and not for our ours only, but all for the whole world. Amen. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Abukare. Now, the word advocate in the Greek is very interesting. It's called parakletos. Now, you may ask me, uh, but the Holy Spirit is also the parakletos, the advocate. Yes. Uh, so when you look at the original Greek, Jesus is our parakletos, and the Holy Spirit is our alos parakletos, which means another helper, another advocate. Right. So let's look at uh, what what this advocate means. It literally means uh, uh, called to one side or called to one aid. Uh, you know, it, it is used in a court of justice. Uh, you know, uh, so if you want any legal assistance in any matter, uh, a counsel or a defense, what we do is we ask for an advocate and the advocate stands and speaks on our behalf right so if you if you picture a courtroom very rarely does the person who is uh, put uh, you know on, on trial very rarely he gets to speak right uh, uh, only only after they have been you know sentenced is when they'll give them a time to speak and in some cases they don't even do that right uh, but here the, the word advocate, parakletos, is somebody who's our assistant, our counsel, our defense. And, and if you look at yourself, you know, we can picture ourselves, uh, picture this. We are standing in the court and we are in that, you know, the trial room uh, and, and, and uh, the court is being, uh, is taking place. The, the verdicts are being passed and our advocate, our helper, our aid is the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Uh, the word parakletos is occurs about five times in the New Testament, and uh, and it's only one time here in one John two one as advocate, because in other uh, you know in other translations the word parakletos is also used as different you know like we mentioned right uh, assistant counsel uh, uh, legal help legal. Uh, uh, assistant and defense but in this verse 1 John 2 1 as it says there we have an advocate if anyone sins we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous right now we want to just dwell a little more on this word parakletos um, the word parakletos is a big word, right? Just like the word, <clears throat> you know, remember the word sozo, we saw, we studied about that word, right? It's a power, power packed word. It's got uh, several meanings to it. It's not just salvation, it's deliverance, it's healing, it's, uh, it's uh, restoration, it's so many 
uh, uh, parallels and synonyms to that one word. Same way, even in Paracletos, it's got a sevenfold meaning, right? What is that sevenfold meaning? Now, the Amplified Bible, uh, I highly recommend uh, to, that each of us, especially as students, right, uh, to read uh, the message translation and the Amplified Version because it gives a lot of um, extra details and it really helps us to, you know, really bring out the essence of the verses. So I would encourage you to, uh, you know, you can go online, you can read it uh, on Google as well. Uh, but what is that sevenfold uh, meaning of this word parakletos? One, comforter. Two, he's a helper. Three, strengthener. Four, intercessor. Five, he's our counselor. Six, uh, sorry, uh, uh, a standby. And seven, an advocate. So you got those seven aspects in that one word, sevenfold meaning in that one word, Paracletos. Right? He's, uh, let's go over that again. He's our comforter, he's our helper, he's our strengthener intercessor, counselor, standby, and advocate with the Father. So now, when we read John 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, we put all of this in context, and it's going to read this way, right? My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have the advocate which means the sevenfold meaning the comforter the helper the strengthener the intercessor the counselor the standby and the advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous so you see the word advocate is not just a one-time word these are the these seven things are is what jesus is doing for us now picture this the Lord Jesus said, I'm going to send you a, a helper and he's going to reveal the will of the Father to you. That's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes. He's also our alos, uh, parakletos, another advocate. But he's got the same functions. What does he do? He comforts us. He helps us. strengthens us. He intercedes for us. He's our counselor. And so we can safely say that it's not that the Lord Jesus is gone and he's, you know, he's in heaven and we are here and, you know, there's no, there's nothing much uh, that he's doing. No, no, no. He has given us the Holy Spirit who has all of these attributes and all of these functions that he's fulfilling right now. Right now, picture this, uh, you know, uh, say, for example, we are in a situation we need to make very important decision. And the decision can be something that can affect us on the long run, right? Now, what do we do? We can say, God, I, the Lord Jesus, we can pray, Jesus, I know that you are my advocate. You are my paracletos. And when I say paracletos, you are also my counselor. So in this situation, I need your counsel. I need your wisdom. Remember, the Holy Spirit comes also with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Right? Picture this. Maybe we've just been tired or we've lost uh, a, a certain uh, you know, uh, battle in our life. We have failed. We've fallen. We are weak. feel like giving up. And what we can do is we can pray and say, Lord Jesus, I know you are my paracletos you are my one of the aspects of being a paracletos is my strengthener so i know that holy spirit you're going to give me strength to overcome the season that i'm in i know that you're going to help me and lift me up you know the bible teaches us that the holy spirit with us is like jesus with us right there's no difference. It's not like, okay, uh, Jesus was not there. No, anyways, his Holy Spirit is there. So uh, so that's why I couldn't do much. No, no, the Holy Spirit, Jesus and the Holy Spirit is with us. It's the same thing. 
Because what are they doing? They are parakletos. They are standing as advocates front with the Father. Now, in 1 John 2, 1 and 2, the context here, it had to do with sin. When we sin, we have an advocate, uh, which is the Lord Jesus Christ uh, standing before the Father. Now, here's something very important. We must understand this. Sin does not break our relationship with God. Right? It does not break our relationship. So when we sin, intentionally, unintentionally, it's not that our relationship with the Lord is broken, but our fellowship, our intimacy with the Lord has been reduced. Right? It has it temporarily breaks or it temporarily is affected. Right? So for example, right, uh, we have accepted the Lord maybe three years earlier. Right? He said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a new person. You've said the Lord's Prayer. You've given your heart to the Lord Jesus. You've confessed your sins. But somewhere along the line, you know, we have sinned. That does not mean that that relationship with God is broken off. But the fellowship, the intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ, with the Father, with the Holy Spirit is affected and it's cut off. What does Paul say? He writes and he says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit whom, with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. What does it mean to grieve the Holy Spirit? Now, for example, I've, uh, Jesus is saying, I'm sending my, I'm, you know, my, uh, the, my Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and he's going to be an allos parakletos. He's going to do everything that I would do if I was with you. Right? Now, if we are grieving him, if we are sinning, constant sin, we are suppressing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Right? And I've always used this example. Imagine you're standing in a room, right? And every time we sin, it's like putting a, a brick, right, in front of us. And then that brick becomes more and more, and you keep adding bricks because of the sin. And finally, you have a wall in front of us. And so what's happening? The Holy Spirit is trying to speak to us, but we have this wall of sin, and so we're not able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. We're not able to uh, have an intimate relationship with him. So what we must do, we must immediately confess our sins. When we know when we're walking in sin, immediately confess and say, God, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I know I have fallen short, uh, but I know that you still love me. That's the relationship. But I want to still love you. That's the fellowship. Uh, a relationship and a fellowship is always two ways. Right? It's not one way. It's two ways. Uh, therefore, you and I have this confidence when we pray, when we ask God for forgiveness. He is faithful and just to forgive our sins. And he strengthens us in our weakness. And he knows that the weakness that caused us to sin, uh, uh, the, the parakletos as an advocate, he will stand to strengthen us during that time. So why is this important? Because you and I can enter the presence of God uh, without any shame, without any condemnation, because the blood of Jesus has cleansed us. Why is it that in the old covenant, the, the people could not go in on their own? Why did they need a high priest? It was because there was condemnation. They knew. They knew that they haven't fulfilled the law. They knew there was guilt. But now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, I want to be careful here. Just because there's no condemnation does not mean we continue a life of sin. Paul writes and he, in many places he says that's not acceptable. Uh, we are dead to sin. Right? We cannot continue in sin. Uh, but if we do sin, Immediately, we ask for forgiveness and receiving that forgiveness and saying that, God, because of the blood, uh, now I am justified. 
that is the most powerful part and the enemy uh, cannot really do much about it right uh, he can put guilt he can put shame condemnation uh, but when we stand on this that jesus is my paracletos the holy spirit is a allos paracletos who's going to help me he's my advocate uh, and i'm coming to his presence not by my own works then we're completely free from shame and condemnation now just a side note on this whole aspect of being an advocate there are a lot of teachings uh going around uh, uh called the teachings on the courts of heaven uh where basically what it is is i'll just try and summarize this for you uh if we have sinned right uh, uh there, as believers we have to go to the courts of heaven and plead our case before the father right we have to go and plead our case before the father in the courts of heaven now this is a teaching that's been going on for a long time uh early 90s onwards these kind of uh, erroneous teachings now the reason we don't uh, believe in it right there's a lot of scriptures to validate that uh but we're just going to put a few of them out right it does not hold in the light of the completed work of the cross now if i go and if i have to plead my case god is going to judge me as a sinner right then the work of the cross is of no use and the, the whole point of you know getting into heaven getting into the presence of god is not me pleading my case but it's the lord jesus pleaded who who already uh fought the case and has won the case so that's what the cross is all about so uh it does not go in line uh with the completed work of the cross right uh and, and so oh, the bible teaches us that the lord jesus he condemned satan he destroyed satan uh and 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 now satan has no place uh in 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 heaven or he has no place uh to partake in our lives right so as as we are declared as righteous we are declared as fully qualified to partake in the inheritance colossians says uh we are partakers of christ so there's no need of us going and pleading our case right to another example why we don't believe in this whole thing of course of heaven is because um now the lord jesus was tempted at just as how we are all tempted through all areas the lord jesus was tempted as a human being right and he overcame all those areas but we don't see you know uh the, the lord jesus going into the courts of heaven and to fight our case against him in order to you know to walk with what the father wanted him to walk in that authority no we don't see that at all right and three today satan has no access to the presence of god he has no access so it's not like satan is standing in one place the father's in one place and we are standing there like the picture of job uh, and then uh you know and then satan is we are pleading our case before the father and satan is standing there no satan ha has been you know in the in the book of genesis i mean uh, isaiah says uh that he and his angels three fourth of his angels were were thrown out of heaven so right now so you got the second heaven you got the third heaven apostle paul talks about going to the third heaven he says when i went to the third heaven i saw things that were unimaginable i cannot comprehend i could not speak it was too much for human minds to conceive that's the third heaven that's the presence of god now satan is only working in the second heaven and on earth right now the second heaven is uh the the princes of the air right remember daniel is praying uh and uh, as he was praying uh what does it say that his prayers did not go up because of the works uh that there was hindrances for the his prayers to reach heaven and and so that's when uh the archangel comes and uh 
uh, you know, comforts Daniel and says, your prayers are going to be answered. Uh, now, even when we see uh, Satan and his demons, they're working on the spiritual realm. That is the second heaven, right? But he, he can't just go walk into heaven, the presence of God, no. He has been defeated. He, ha he cannot even think about, you know, going there, right? He cannot. Because he knows his destruction. He knows that God is almighty. He knows that he's been defeated. So uh, to present this whole thing of standing before the courts of heaven, of course, there are many more scriptures, uh, but to present our case in front of the courts of heaven would be erroneous teachings. And that's something that uh, we do not subscribe to. Uh, any thoughts, any questions on this? Uh, Anybody has any questions? Uh, everyone okay? Is it okay? Uh, you're able to understand that, that whole aspect of courts of heaven, also this whole aspect of Paracletos, the Lord Jesus being uh, that sevenfold meaning uh, to us. Uh, any questions? Any thoughts? Should we continue? Should we continue? Yes, Pastor, let's continue. Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Let's yes, go. Sir. Let's continue. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, so, how does the Paracletos help us? How does the Paracletos help us? Jesus is our Paracletos. He's in heaven. He has sent the Holy Spirit. That is the Allos Paracletos. How does the Holy Spirit help us? And I'm sure that all of us, uh, you know, we have studied the Holy uh, the sessions on Holy Spirit. We may have heard sermons or done your personal study on the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're just going to look at a few things now. How does he come to our aid? How does... The Holy Spirit, being the Paracletos, strengthen us. Now, Romans 8.26 states that he helps us in our weaknesses and he takes a hold, takes a hold of us together uh, with us against our weaknesses. He does this through prayer and intercession that rises out of us. Now, how does the Paracletos help us? We must be willing to go against our weakness. Now, we all, as believers, as human beings, have weaknesses. Now, if anyone says, I don't have a weakness, they're lying. Right? We all have certain weaknesses, right? Uh, uh, whether it is spiritual weakness or a physical weakness. Uh, the great apostle Paul had a weakness too. He says, I can't see, uh, you know, history says that he couldn't see. And that's why many of his writings, he says, uh, I think it's the book of Romans where he says, look how, or the Galatians, uh, he says, look how big I write, uh, how big my alphabets are. Uh, I write with big letters to show you that it is me writing. And it said that uh, Paul may have had a big problem on his eye, with his eyesight. And, and so the Holy Spirit uh, in our weaknesses we must be willing to go against our weakness. Now, if we are willing to go against our weakness, the Allos Paracletos, the Holy Spirit, comes aside us and he assists us in overcoming our weakness. Now, picture this, right? Uh, say, just an example, right? Say there's somebody who is addicted to gaming, right? And... It's really ruining this young man's life. Say it's a 15-year-old boy. But he's given his life to Christ. He goes to church, serving in the church. He loves the Lord. But this gaming thing has really taken a hold of him. He's not doing well in his grades. He's missing out on his assignments. He's, he's just in a complete mess because of the games. Now, he realizes it. Okay, hey, you know what? I need to get out of these games I need to be serious because my main exams are coming up and I need to get out of this and I need to, you know, make sure that my life is right. The moment he says that, 
he decides that and he just says a prayer holy spirit help me get out of this the holy spirit is right there and he'll come with all his strength with all his power to assist you to assist this boy to stop gaming and this is just a simple example right now the enemy is going to he's not going to sit back and watch and say okay now holy spirit has come so i can't do anything no the enemy is going to try and try but the holy spirit he's our strengthener he will assist us to overcoming our weaknesses but we must be willing first if a person who's accepted the lord and he's going on gaming and you know playing all these video games and wasting time and not studying well and he just feels okay life's going to go on it's okay i'm going to do something else in my life uh, the holy spirit is not going to intentionally force this person to you know change his ways of course he he's our reminder he reminds he brings conviction uh, but he's not going to force himself remember the one of the attributes of the holy spirit is that he's a dove he's gentle so is the lord jesus christ he's not going to force people to you know do something so we must be willing to when we are willing he he does this through prayer and intercession and so when we pray he enters in us and empowers us through the holy spirit through prayer and intercession right so for example there's you know uh, let me take this other example there's maybe there's somebody who's uh, you know this boy who is you know always addicted to uh, youtube or facebook instagram social media and such right uh, just an example right uh, just trying to make us understand right now every time he wants to go to a phone or use the laptop and his mind goes to that place at that moment what we can do is pray and say holy spirit make an intercession for me that i may not fall into this temptation and the holy spirit begins to pray on our behalf on our behalf he makes intercession for us he intercedes through us and for us so when we're speaking in tongues uh uh now uh what are we doing we are speaking a language that is unknown the holy spirit is making intercession with the father to empower us and speaking in tongues is very 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 powerful it just energizes you it just strengthens you and there are times we've had a long day of ministry hard work uh been so really tired and we just want to just go and just you know even students you know you just want to get some rest go back okay go and sleep right have your dinner sleep and yeah, of course we all feel that way but there are times when the holy spirit has woken me up and said you pray you know, maybe it was some confusion in the mind or I'm, i'm planning something ahead i'm not able to get the right idea or the right uh, way to deal with things or there's a problem there's a situation there's a dispute uh, in the church and i need to handle this and i'm confused how do i do it pray in tongues we do the holy spirit will give us the right idea he will speak to us so i want to encourage each one of us spend time praying in tongues is powerful because he is our alos parakletos right now uh, if you haven't yet begun speaking in tongues it's all right you can uh, you know the Lord, holy spirit you can continue to pray hold fast remember the holy spirit is faithful jesus is faithful uh, continue to trust in him but you can pray in your own words pray uh, and he will come through for us he will help us in our uh, weaknesses so as believers we must learn to relate to jesus as our high priest as well now you know in the natural we relate to people in different ways right uh, we relate to our parents in one way we relate to our friends in another way 
uh, you know, we relate to our cousins another way. Usually, you know, when you have cousins, right, uh, it's more of a very friendly relationship. You love your cousins. You love to spend time together. Uh, then you got you relate to your colleagues a different way. You relate to your boss a different way. So we all relate to people in different ways. Now, I can relate to Jesus as a king. I can relate to Jesus as a lion. I can relate to Jesus as a lamb. Or I can think of Jesus, the first thing that may come to my mind is love. Or another thing that may come to my mind is humility. Uh, and another thing that comes to my mind is uh, a God who does miracles, some things that nobody has done, he has done it. Uh, and when you read Revelations, you read as you read Revelations chapter one, especially, you see the glorified Lord Jesus, and you read, uh, you know, in, in the book of Matthew, and you read those, uh, uh, you know, the ministry of the Lord Jesus, how he was a simple man, people just, you know, uh, wanted to stone him, and people didn't like him. But now, Revelations one. His eyes are like burning fire. His hair is like, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, white as brass, and his his uh, his tongue like a double-edged sword. And you can see a glorified Jesus. Then you can also see him as a simple lamb. Now, as believers, all of us must also relate to Jesus as our high priest. Right? As a high priest, understand that, you know, when we think think about this, right? Uh, okay, uh, I have sinned. Now, instead of going and, you know, finding a lamb and cutting it, like what was done in the Old Testament, relate to Jesus as your high priest. Say, Lord Jesus, you are my high priest. And I know that you are going to go into the Father's presence, not with any other blood, but by your blood so that my sins will be forgiven, so that my relationship with the Father is restored. Right? What does it do? It gives us boldness. It gives us confidence. It gives us an assurance of faith. Know that he is interceding for you as you take your request to the Father in his name. For example, in the church, maybe your ch uh, church is... Uh, you know, calling for prayer and only five people turn up. Don't send them back. Okay, only five people have come. Let's not pray today. It's all right. When you pray, whether there's two or three, when you pray, know that the Lord Jesus is interceding with you as you take your request to the Father. Right? So we can pray, Holy Spirit, we can pray, Lord Jesus, please bless the church. Uh, you know, make the church, let there be signs, miracles, and wonders. Let the work of your Holy Spirit just move in our church. Let there be, uh, you know, uh, transformations of hearts. Let there be miracles and let, let people, let this heart of stone be removed and let there be a heart of flesh. There may be just 10 people in your church and we are praying this. No problem. We are, we are not praying, you know, we're not praying empty words. Remember, for those 10 people, the Lord Jesus is interceding with you for those requests that you are making to the Father. Can you picture that? It's a big deal. Maybe you've called for a worship evening and there are two people who've come for that. Don't say, okay, no worship evening today because nobody's come. No, it's okay. Do it. When you are interceding, when you are praying, the Lord Jesus is there. Right? Know that he is there. He is merciful and faithful to strengthen you in every way. And know that he speaks the Father's heart to you by his Spirit. And this is so wonderful. This is so reassuring. Right? Uh, he speaks the Father's heart to us by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit tells you, uh, you know, maybe you're praying and says, today, I want you to call this person and pray for them. Or just call him up and, you know, uh, talk to them. And when we do it, you know, it is the Father revealing his will 
to us. There is something that the father, father wants to do in that person's life. Maybe our words will impact that. Maybe that in that situation they are in will comfort them. Right? So when the Holy Spirit is leading us to do things, remember it's the Father's will revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. Right? So what is Jesus doing as our mediator? The word mediator in the Greek is mesitis, literally meaning to go in between, right? Uh, to stand in between, to come in the middle. Uh, now, what is, there are two aspects to Jesus as our mediator. First aspect is, has to do with his redemptive work on the cross where he alone can be our mediator between God and man. Let's read 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. Yes, any one of us. 1 Timothy chapter 2, 5 and 6. Yes, anyone? 1 Timothy chapter 2, 5 and 6. First Timothy chapter two, five and six. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, uh, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Amen. Thank you, Zeli. Uh, so, what is he doing here? He is a mediator between God and man. Now, the Lord Jesus is the only person who could stand as a mediator because he is fully God and could represent God to man. And he was fully man who could represent man to God. Right? And that's why that whole twist of words, there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. So uh, Paul is trying to emphasize that he's there. The Lord Jesus was fully God and he represents God to man. And he's fully man, representing man to God, right? So as a mediator, that's what he is doing. Two, he's a guarantor of the new covenant so that when anything, you know, so for example, we, we, you know, we take a policy, right? And the policy says you need to have a guarantor. So, you know, you'll put maybe your parent or your, uh, wife or your son or your daughter, you put that as a guarantee. So they will be somebody who will stand on behalf. Like he, they will act as a guarantee, right? For something that, you know, they have not done anything, but they will obtain it later. Now the book of Hebrews talks about this in many, many places. Now let's read a couple of verses, right? Hebrews 7.22. Uh, is it going to be easier if I, uh, you know, share the screen on the notes for us to read the verses? Uh, should I do that? Maybe. Let me just see. It's fine in either way. Okay. Okay. Uh, can one of us read that? Uh, Hebrews seven twenty two. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Yeah, uh, and let's read the the TPD version as well. Uh, it says in Hebrews seven twenty two. Uh, so all of this magnifies the truth that we have a superior covenant with God than what they experience. For Jesus Himself is its guarantor. Jesus himself is its guarantor. Hebrews 8.6, I'll read that. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry in as much as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which is established on better promises. Right. Uh, I'll also read uh, Hebrews 12.24. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel, right? He lives 
as our mediator, he lives to see his covenant enforced on our lives. Right? He is the one who set up the covenant. He is the one who is the high priest of the covenant. The Lord Jesus is the one who is the mediator of the covenant and the advocate. And he's doing everything on our behalf. That's, that's why the Lord, you know, Paul writes and he says, uh, into thy presence we come, not by the works that we have done. Right? It is not our abilities. It is not our talents. It is not our skills. It is not our works that we come in. Because he has done everything. There's nothing more that we have to do. Right? Uh, and, and so... It is such a joy for us to understand this. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll see how do we receive uh, Christ's mediation uh, of the new covenant, meaning as a mediator, uh, what, what is it that we can, what is, what is the benefit for us as Jesus, as our mediator? So we look at that when we come back. Let's take a break and we'll be back at 11 o'clock. Thanks. <music> 